Hello, greetings. Can y'all hear me? I can hear you. Okay. How you doing, Kenyatta? I am well. How are you? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Tired of yeah. hell with my mic. Cause do you say cause of hell? Yeah, I said tired. Oh, oh. I'm about oh. to say go ahead and cause it. <laughs> yeah, look. Yeah, we did it today on another stream. Because hell, hell. <laughs> To go around, and I promise you, people don't want me to draw swords on none of their ass. Okay, oh, <laughs> suck it, suck it. Let me quit. <laughs> <laughs> I was tired too, but you know what? I was gotten there cooking and listening to some old R and B seventies, eighties. You know, Gat Band and Cameo in them. <laughs> yeah, it did. It woke me up. It did. All righty, so we gonna do chapter eight. Um. Uh, for those of you just now joining, we are reading in the ISIS papers. Chapter 8's title is Guns and Symbols. It was re written in uh, 1975 to 1977. It goes as follows. Anthony Sampson, in his book, The Armed Bazaar, From Lebanon to Lockhead, 1977, informs us that the word, quote, weapon was, until the 14th century, synonymous with penis. Mm -hmm. Hi, Celine. How you doing? There are 25,000 handgun deaths per year in the United States of America. The president of the U.S. in 1975 was subjected to two assassination attempts in the time span of three weeks. Handguns were the instrument used in each assassination attempt. The same president was against handgun control. The above statements are laden with highly significant meaning which is not immediately apparent and which can be understood fully only when the underlying psychodynamics of the collective white psyche of the white supremacy power system and its culture are probed, dissected, and revealed. Okay, let me go somewhere else. <laughs> um, Joseph Kraft, writing in the September 25th, 1975 issue of the Washington Post, stated, the starting point for analysis and the recognition that for better or for worse, the United States is a country with a thing about guns. Yeah, that's still, that's still true today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the Washington Post stated in the September 25th, 1975 the right to bear arms is guaranteed in the Constitution. Millions of Americans regard hunting as a favorite recreation. Thousands collect guns as souvenirs. I once visited a home in Merchantburg, Ohio, of a prominent official. In this home, no wall was uncovered by some kind of rifle, shotgun, pistol, or musket. The owner, William Saxby, 
Mm -hmm. He recently became a transgender. Mm. Mr. Kraft used the term pro-gun culture to describe American culture and society. As he cited that there have been no fewer than five different presidential commissions that have recommended more stringent forms of gun control. While recognizing, along with Mr. Kraft, the predominant use of guns in the American frontier days, I strongly disagree that guns were needed for survival in the simple terms of the continuation of life. After all, the Native Americans taught the, Euro taught the Europeans how to grow corn to feed themselves and survive. Guns were needed, however, if Native non-white Americans were going to be removed successfully from the land that the European whites wished to dominate and control. This essay is being written neither in review nor protest of the horrendous carnage of Native American life in particular, nor in protest of the general path of carnage that has been tread in this area of the world. It is being written in hopes of shedding light on the seemingly the seeming dilemma that in spite of the past and present potential carnage from handguns, there is tremendous resistance among the dominant population to have guns, as well as other instruments of life destruction, including atomic hydrogen and neutri neutron bombs, brought under control. In my view, <clears throat> the gun is a critical symbol in the subconscious mind of white peoples everywhere. This symbol is primarily operative, as are our true symbols at the unconscious level of the brain activity. Increasing numbers of black behavioral scientists are beginning to understand that the dominant thrust in what has been become known as the Western civilization is racism. Once we will begin, once we become aware of the deep humiliation that is apparently felt by whites because of their skin whiteness due to genetic mutation to albinism and because of their genetic vulnerability when compared to non-whites, black, brown, red, and yellow peoples. It is possible to understand that historically the greatest status of sex in the white supremacy so, uh, system and culture. Sex is the act of self-reproduction and the act of and the act responsible for the production of the self and the app appearance of the self. In the white brain computer, if white, pale, genetically vulnerable self is degraded, then the act that produced the self will be degraded into that same brain computer. An example by the famous Western author of what whites have thought consciously about white skin is presented by Mark Twain, who, in his essay, Skin Deep, from On the Damned Human Race, stated, then there would have been an added disadvantage of the white complexion. It is not an unbearably unpleasant complexion when it keeps to itself. But when it comes into competition with masses of brown and black, the fact is betrayed that it is endurable only because we are used to it. Nearly all black and brown <laughs> skin are beautiful, but the beautiful white skin is rare. How rare? One may learn by walking down the street a street in Paris, New York, or London on a weekday, particularly an unfashionable street, and keeping count of the satisfactory complexions encountered in the course of a mile. Where dark complexions are masked, they make the white look bleached out, unwholesome, and sometimes, frankly, ghastly. Mm -hmm. The acts of self-production and self-reproduction are the only targets of degradation in the white psyche brain computer. Within the thought and logic processes of the white psyche, the genitals themselves are degraded, both male and female genitals. Those parts of the anatomy and uh, physiology that are responsible for self-production and self-reproduction, especially the white male sexual apparatus, is seen as inferior and inadequate when compared to the sexual apparatus of the black male. See Chapter 7. In the May 1977 issue of Medical Aspects of Human Sexuality, in an article entitled Men's Fear of Having Too Small a Penis, Povo W. Tolstein, M.D., writes, a surprisingly large number of men fear that their penises are not of adequate size. Although Tolstein makes no reference to the race or color of the men he interviewed, it is known in the clinical practice that this is not a majority 
a major fear of black men. However, he does state, it is hard to determine the exact origin of the myth of the big penis. In many cultures, such, an, such as ancient Egypt, the penis did become a fertility sim symbol and was consequently pictured with enormous dimensions. In classic Greece, however, small genitals were considered more beautiful than larger ones. Romans reversed this concept, and Western culture appears by and large to have followed them. It is interesting that Tulsing makes no mention of any attempt to measure the penis size of the of white and black men in a culture heavily laden with this specific white male preoccupation, a culture in which large numbers of white males are daily in close proximity to black males and aware of their presence in society, especially in the area of sports, gang symbolic of special male powerlessness and virility, where black males dominate. Interestingly, Clyde Keeler, writing on albinism in an article entitled Kuna Moon Child Albinism, 1950-1970, Journal of Hereditary, number 61, 1970, states, The voice quality of albino males is soft and higher pitched than in merino males. In addition, they appear to be deficient in sex hormone, and while they may be fertile, they have a lower phallic posture due to flaccidity. Albinos usually have flabby muscles and reduced muscular strength as shown by manometer readings. This is of interest because in my view, all skin whiteness is related to albinism or a variant thereof. Keeler's observation implies that there may be a genetic association between albino or white skin color and the appearance and posture of the penis. Albinism influencing small penis size or lack of penis posture, causing its appearance to be small. Also, it is known that in comparison to the black population, whites have less mus muscle definition, thus muscular flabbiness compared to blacks. It may be said that most fundamentally there is a genetic basis and secondary and atomic and physiologic basis for the white fear of white genetic annihilation. This, in turn, became the basis for the global system of white supremacy, domination, and its attendant culture. A system and culture evolved and structured to present, prevent white genetic annihilation and to ensure white genetic survival. Indeed, if the understood threat to white genetic survival was the black male's genital apparatus, consciously and unconsciously, the white psyche would be compelled to produce a weapon of defense of comparable or greater power than that of the black male's penis and testicles. It should be made clear here that black male's genital apparatus is the most feared relative to the genital apparatus of other non-white males because in possessing the greatest potential to produce melanin, the pigment responsible for all true skin coloration, black males have the greatest genetic potential to annihilate the glo global white minority. The individual and collective white brain computer, given that task of solving the global problem of white genetic survival, eventually evolved a solution in forms of a technology that would address the specific issue of white genetic and genital weakness or inadequacy. Technology always is developed to take over at a point of the human organism's atom uh, atomical and physiological limitation. Thus, the white brain computer printout was, was a weapon that would be the exact symbolic replica of male genitalia, a weapon that would take over at the point of limitation of the white male genital apparatus, an apparatus that had the very specific limitation of being unable to annihilate blacks and other people of color genetically. Diagrams one through five illustrate what I am saying. Okay, so um, pick up oh um, while I get you this okay from the above four drawings 
it is clear that the gun in its essential shape and functioning is the exact counterpart to the functioning genital apparatus and to the erect penis that is ejaculating. In other words, the handle and chamber are analogous to the testicles. The barrel of the gun is analogous to the penis. The bullets are the sperm contained in the ejaculate with their genital material, I mean, with their genetic material. In the white psyche, white genetic annihilation by blacks or other non-whites is experienced as the destruction of life by the black genital apparatus. The firing gun in function achieves for the white the destruction of the lives of blacks and other non-white peoples. Thus, to the extent that the guns manufactured and made by the white collective is the context I mean, in the context of the white supremacy system slash culture, were used against blacks and other genetically dominant colored people on earth. They became the answer, at least a temporarily comforting answer to the great fear of white genetic annihilation. The gun became not only the weapon, the developed technology to ensure white genetic survival, but it also became the symbolic white penis. Thus, it is no accident that white males often refer to one another as son of a gun. This is, symbolically this is a symbolically determined pattern of speech, and I am certain that white males who use it have not understood in depth why such a phrase entered and remains in their brain computers. <laughs> this phrase deprecates the white male genital apparatus that fathers white people with their genetically deficient state of albinism. It says instead that the white male prefers the gun to be his phallus and the phallus of his father. The gun then becomes the desire all-powerful phallus of the white male, which he conceives of as being an equalizer to the phallus of black and other non-white males. This symbolism underlying the production of the gun in the white psyche and the white supremacy system slash culture also explains the Western expression, God did not create all men equal, but Colonel Colt did, referring to the creator of the Colt revolver. Apparently white males were thinking, at an unconscious level to be sure that God did not create them to be genetically equal to men of color, but their technology of compensation was the gun. Understanding this gun symbolism also clarifies the observation of Anthony Sampson in the opening paragraph of this essay, that the word weapon was up until the 14th century synonymous with penis in Western white civilization. The gun is not the only weapon in the white supremacy system slash culture that in form and function is symbolic of the function, functioning male genital apparatus. The cannon, with its cannon wheels and long black nozzle or two and big black cannon balls shot out as projectiles is one example. Similarly, bullets and bombs are dark colored and resemble individual sperm in general shape and form. And it is of further importance that the gun and these other weapons usually are painted black or at least dark in color. In contrast to these dark colored weapons are the more recently developed missiles that are often painted white, but again shaped as gigantic white penises. These white phallic symbols are now the super weapon of the Superman and the superior race. <clears throat> it is of great interest that these modern large white missiles surround the vast majority of non-white peoples on the planet and when used can counter the threat of white genetic annihilation. Knowledge and understanding of these symbols will make clear the meaning of the Washington Monument and in addition, and, and in addition its proximity to the doomed Jefferson Memorial, I mean domed Jefferson Memorial in Washington, DC. When these two architectural structures are viewed at a distance, they look like diagram five. It is not apparent. It is not apparent that this is the same side view of the penis and the testicles that are the basis for the form and structure of the gun. Of the gun, this, this same lateral view in abstract form of the penis and testicles was the symbol for the World Fair held, held in New York, 1941 to 1942. With all the above in mind, let us again return to the gun. Upon brief reflection, it will be noted that traditionally in the white supremacy culture, guns were slash are worn on one or both hips of the male at the exact level of the male genitals. It is no accident that in this culture, the act of ejaculating, ejaculating is often referred to as shooting off. When the man wearing a gun in a holster is viewed laterally, the gun appears exactly as the side view of the penis and testicles. If guns are worn on both hips and brought together centrally on the belt to the vertical midline of the body, they present the full face view of the penis and both testicles. See diagram six. 
In the U.S., the most popular hero has been the gunfighter, now the present-day detective or lawman. The first chapter of Paul Trackman's book, The Gunfighters, is entitled The Deadly Brotherhood of the Gun. The gunfighters came into prominence follow, following the close of the Civil War. Most of the gunfighters were Southerners who felt humiliated at the loss of their slaves. And the war and by the temporary appearance of power held by blacks who were their former black slaves. The resulting deep sense of white male insecurity and inadequacy was compensated for by the obsessive use of the gun. This was the era of Frank and Jesse James, Billy the Kid, and a host of others for whom the gun made up for a sense of profound and deep inadequacy hidden by a thorough and ruthless exterior. That the lives of others were treated with little value merely reflected the failed sense of adequacy and diminished sense of importance in their own lives. During the same period, the gory sport of cockfighting was highly popular and important as a diversion among ranchers in the West. Thus, it is not surprising that the white male also referred to his penis as a cock or that when a gun, the symbol of the white male phallus is prepared for firing, it is first cocked. In this area of the world, in the white supremacy system, a detective who always carries a gun is a most important hero. The detective with his gun has been referred to as the dick. From this came the longtime comic strip hero detective, Dick Tracy. The white male also has referred to his penis as a dick. And it cannot be uh, ignored that the first child all American children still meet in primary public school is a white male child named Dick along with his sister Jane. In effect, at this early age, the white male child is being instructed to rec recognize that his identity is synonymous with penis, gun. These symbolic reinforcements continue until his death. That is why there is a continuing necessity for gun violence via television for American white children. All of the above has been stated not only to point out basic, a basic preoccupation of the white supremacy slash culture with the threat of white genetic, genetic annihilation, but more importantly to shed light on why there cannot and will not be gun control or weapon control in the global white supremacy slash culture. With the gun being the symbolic genitalia of the white male, his answer to the threat of to white genetic survival, gun control re would represent male genitalia castration. Such gun control would spell the immediate end of white genetic survival on earth. John Ellis, in his book, The Social History of the Machine Gun States, in Africa, small parties of European soldiers and armed settlers often had to face the resistance of large numbers of poorly armed natives. The odds were so in favor of the natives that the white men were obliged to adopt all weapons that would help to maximize their firepower in all parts of the continent against Zulus, Dervishes, Her Hereros, Matabele, and many other peoples. Gatlings, gardeners, and maxims sith down anyone who did. Hmm? Scathe. Oh, okay. Scathe down anyone who dared to stand in the way of the imperialist advance. Without the handful of machine guns, the British South Africa Company might have lost Rhodesia. Lugard might have been driven out of Uganda and the Germans out of Ten. Tanganyika? Tanganyika? Yeah. Okay. Without Hiram Maxim, much of this of subsequent world history might have been very different. Ellis remarks further. In Africa, automatic weapons were used to support the seizure of millions of square miles of land and to discipline those unfortunates who wished to eschew the benefits of European civilization. With machine, machine guns in their armory, mere handfuls of white men Plunderers and visionaries, civilians and soldiers were able to scoff at the objections of the Africans themselves and impose their rule on a whole continent. Thus, in the area of the white supremacy system, where in 1975 there were 25,000 deaths caused by guns, there cannot be gun control. Guns and missiles are viewed as essential aspects of white male anatomy and physiology. Is it an accident that in the U.S. white male children learn to use guns before they learn to use their penises? while black male children learn to use their penises before they learn to use guns. I will close with further observations. Following a lecture that I presented in Los Angeles, California in May, 1977, in which I included a discussion on the symbolism of the gun in the white male psyche, a white male in the audience pointed out the parallel symbolism in the large black umbrella often care about white males in the white supremacy culture. I agree that his observation seemed to be a valid one. 
The long black umbrella carried everywhere became a part of the standard dress of the well-to-do Englishman at a time when it was said that the sun never sets on the British Empire. Of course, this great empire consisted of control over vast numbers of non-white men and their genitals that had the power to annihilate whites. The white man's traditional long black umbrella said in effect, I also have a large black phallus or at least a phallic symbol that denotes my importance and power and a power over the black male gen gen genital apparatus. The same symbolism explains a recent murder in Washington, D.C. A white male shot a white female companion in the mouth as she was in bed with two other white females engaged in sexual activity that all four had been involved in earlier. As the white female victim was engaged, being sexually pleasured by two white females, the white male who was left out feeling genitally rejected, rejected inadequate compared to two females pulled out and used consciously or unconsciously his preferred symbolic penis, the gun. <laughs> wow. Right. <laughs> right. I think I remember, well, I don't know if I remember that. I, I just heard a whole bunch of stories. Mm-hmm. That could have been before I was born. Mm -hmm. This was in 70. Yeah, this was before I was born. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> wow, that's interesting. Um, we was watching, me and my daughter was watching uh, one of the Marvel movies, uh, Endgame. Mm -hmm. and, uh, did you see that movie? Yeah. Okay, remember? Well, I remember it. It's a whole nother different story. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, at the end, you know, when um, Thanos had figured out, you know, that they what they were up to, you know, to, to uh, get all the stones to bring everybody back. And they had had that big, um, you know, war. Yeah. Um, I just remember looking at, <clears throat> no, it might have been Infinity War, but same movie, same movie, basically, yeah. you know. But I just remember looking at, um, remember Winter Soldier was the one with the metal arm. Okay. And I just I looked at him and he was, you know, firing off with his gun at, you know, this this alien race of people, of beings, you know, who was on their job to do what Thanos wanted them to do. And I said to myself, you know, they can't let go of that damn gun. They're gonna prove that I mean, th this is an alien race. You don't know. They're able to get through the vibranium shield over Wakanda. You understand what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> they're able to get through that. But it's your gun that's going to be able to just kill them and get rid of them. I mean, it's always, I'm like, I don't care what it is. I've watched movies where, you know, futuristic or, that, uh, you know, the white men or the humans fighting this, an alien race, whatever the case may be, and it's always that damn gun. And I always question that, like, how is it that your gun is so advanced? You have these advanced races or whatever, you know, alien beings, whatever, coming through with all, all that they got, but in the end, it's your gun that's going to save the day. It's your gun that's going to get rid of them, you know? And I, I laugh. I told my daughter, I kept telling my daughter, I was like, you know, Thanos is black, right? <laughs> okay. And my daughter, huh? I said, okay. <laughs> right. And, you know, he's a Titan. I don't know that much about the Titans, but I had a friend who was, he, he knows a lot about him. He was telling me, you know, the Titans came before the gods, you know? And you I was just telling her. Mm -hmm. Say them years by hook. To see what you okay. say. He'll be watching okay. it. But it's okay. an anime, Attack on Titan. He be, <laughs> he be on the business. Okay. But, you know, and I was telling, I was like, you know, his purple skin, you know. And the man who even played Thanos, what was it? Jo Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin, right? I was like, listen at him. I was like, that man got a little soul. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I be seeing all this stuff in these movies, right? Right. I said, listen, yeah. I said, he's white. I said, but he's Wait a minute. What'd he say? He is. But you got yes. your eyes out, B. So theoretically. <laughs> What is, is it, what is it, the Avengers? Yeah. Um, and she was talking about how they was they kept trying to shoot their guns at this alien race. As if the gun was just gonna take care of everything. Mm -hmm. 
Right, right. <laughs> I mean, exactly. the gun is always with, that's the white man, that is his weapon, you know, and it's just the most superior thing on the face of every dimension and alien space, place, whatever, you understand what I'm saying, that has ever been and ever will and ever exists. It's just going to do the trick. It's just going to do it every yeah. time, you know. So and, and they shooting at an alien race that um, was able to break through the shields of Wakanda and somehow the white folks thought that they gun was going to take out these aliens. <laughs> it's all. <laughs> so I was asking if Santos was a titan. And did the titans come before the guys? They didn't come before the guys. They didn't? He said they didn't come before the guys. Oh, wow. Okay. My friend said they did, but I honestly, I don't know much no, about not Marvel, just period. Huh? Yeah. Oh, never mind. He said they did come before the guys, but not in Marvel mythology. Oh, you know, yeah, not Marvel yeah, mythology. Yeah, I'm just saying Titans in general. Mythology. Yeah, they did. They came before the guys. So okay. And my friend was telling me that um, because he's all into it. I don't know much. I don't know about the Titans at all. I ain't gonna lie. You know, he was be watching that shit. Oh, he be watching. Okay, he be watching. But, that shit is gruesome. Okay, I was oh, like, yeah. Nah, you oh got yeah, oh it. yeah, oh yeah. And he told me um, that you know the Titans were black. You know, <laughs> and, hold on. Okay. We are talking about the ISIS papers. In chapter 8, she's talking about the symbology of the gun. So, Kiyata was talking about what she observed when she was watching uh, Infinity War. Yeah, Infinity War. She, she said she thinks that Dantos may have been a titan. So, I was like, let me go ask my husband because he'd be watching this shit. So I was just asking you if you thought Dantos was a Titan. Ty Dantos is a Titan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And so my, my friend was telling me that, uh, you know, the Titans came before the gods, but he was just saying that the Titans were black. Okay. Uh -huh. Again. So I'm just watching this. And I know not necessarily Marvel mythology, but I'm just piecing all this together. Right. 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 <laughs> And I told her, I said, well, look at his purple skin, you know, because I think that like in ancient Kemet, like some of the uh, on the walls of ancient Kemet, like you have some of the, I believe the, some of the people that are portrayed or some of the gods that are portrayed, maybe it's the gods, maybe like the, some of the Netaru are green. And uh, I read something before that that would symbol symbolic, I mean, that it equated to black, but that that's, I can't remember where I read that from. That was so long ago, but anyway. Yeah. So I was like, look at his purple skin. I said, but then look at him. Look at look at the man who's playing uh, Thanos. I was like, he got a little soul to him. He he, you know, he he's just not just he's not like any of the others. You understand he what I'm saying? Like a nigga. Huh? He looked like a nigga. And th that, bam! He looked like a nigga. He sounded like a nigga. So I I looked up uh, Josh Brolin because that's the man who plays Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, this is a fine white man. This man got a little soul to him. I was like, he might be passing for all we know. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, we still got that going on, you know? And right. like, there's still folks passing out here, you know? And um, I know it just was just funny to me, but it's just like, and you know, I'm like, that's just like, to me, that's just representative of them getting rid of, uh, you know, the black race in a sense, this advanced race of beings, you know? But um, oh, I could go, go on and on with movies and how I'd be watching them. And like we was watching Birds. You did you ever see the Birds by Alfred Hitchcock? Oh yeah, I okay. Saw birds. Okay, and I told her we were watching that. I said, you know the, who the Birds are, don't you? <laughs> it's funny because my daughter be like, Ma, you know. I said, yeah. Birds are black folks. I said, it, I said this might this movie might have been. Before maybe the civil rights era or the, you know, it's just representative of them coming in and white folks having to free, feeling like they got to flee for their life, you and and them yeah. taking over, you know. But I just find it interesting. This thing is guns and symbols. What she's saying in here because it's, it's I, I see that because no matter what in every movie you see is I don't care what the movie is about, you know. Whenever it's some kind of battle that needs to be fought or whatever is all they always pick up some kind of damn gun i don't care how far futuristic it is it's always some kind of damn gun you understand what i'm saying yeah so it just kind of ties in to what she's saying you know that because of 
you know, basically what she's saying. I see that. Because a lot of this shit that, that people talk about, you know what I'm saying, that wants to make fun of you, but shit, if you're looking at the world around you, the hell you talking about, they always got a fucking gun. They ain't trying to create no other type of weapon. Right. Every type of weapon they come with, is still going to look like a damn gun. It's always going to look like a damn gun. Even if it's futuristic, it's all, and it's shooting out missiles, it's still a damn gun. And I'm like, you mean tell me, uh, we, here we are, here this movie is representing something in the future, and they still, what did, what did the sister say? And what, and what, and uh, not Wakanda, what was the name of the movie? Uh, Black Panther. She, when she talked about the guns, she was like, it's so primitive. And, you know, and I'm like, they, I don't care. They always going to have their weapon. No matter how advanced they are supposed to be or the time is supposed to be, the gun, it, it's always their weapon, a gun in some way, shape, or form. Baby, we got the right to bear un arms under the Constitution, okay? That's how mm -hmm. this shit go. Right. You get right. to see it when they start talking about gun control and all these all you see all them goddamn white folks get to act the monkey's ain't. Right. Oh, okay. Like somebody yeah. trying to take their life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness because they said we need to do something. We don't give a fuck how many motherfuckers is dying on these streets because of this right. shit. We right. got to have our goddamn guns. I'll okay. try to police my generals. You can't tell me what to do with my dick. <laughs> <clears throat> uh oh. I guess I can I better go go back inside because I can't hear nothing. Can y'all do you back? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, I can now. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Um, yeah, that's right. They don't care. It's all about their gun, ain't it? Always. It's not always a gun. Like, yeah, they do. They do guns like they do with them dogs. They see all they see weird, man. What did you say that again? I said they love them guns like they love them dogs. All of they oh. see weird. Okay. Okay. But it's not like... So, uh, I'm assuming that a lot of these chapters ain't even that long because it looks like we got halfway through the book. <laughs> Right, I don't think they are. They are just papers. Yeah. So let's see. Let's start on 19. 19 to. Oh, never mind. Shit. The next chapter is fairly long. Oh, is it? And it's called The Motherfucker and the Original Motherfucker. Oh. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we didn't. We gonna get into that Monday. Yeah, we can do it tomorrow if you want to. I mean, you know, if we have time, because I don't yeah, want to, you um, got to do tomorrow. Mm -mm, I'll be here. I just want to finish the uh, hoodoo. Right, we got hoodoo and what mm -hmm. else? It was something else we were supposed to do, but we got to do that shit. Yeah, I, I can't think of nothing else off the top of my head. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well then, let's go ahead close this stream out. Okay. Then, are you busy? I'm just about to eat. That's all. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna start another stream, and we okay. can talk about the bullshit. Oh, okay. All, all right. right. Okay. All right. Bye.